Our contract with the builder specified just a patio right here under the porch ceiling, but I think we're gonna kind of wreck the budget a few steps further here and extend this patio from day one, kind of a do it right the first time situation. I cannot decide whether to put a 45 here on this corner or to run it out square, but I'm gonna decide that in the next few minutes. Eventually there'll be a sidewalk running around the side of the house, but that can happen another day. So, all right, let's watch some tractors. Well, I decided to keep the patio square here rather than clip off that corner, so we'll see how that works out. And as I was looking through all this footage, all I could think about was the equipment and how cool and small and compact it is. You can't tell from the video, but it's really quiet also, it's easy to operate, and it has not always been like this. Now, these machines are made by Caterpillar. That's the world-famous super mega corporation that makes construction and mining equipment, and we're going to talk about them here in a minute. But before I do, I gotta tell you guys a quick story to give some context, even though it could be considered embarrassing. Until very recently, I was not tuned in whatsoever to small construction equipment like this and what all it can do. Even though I grew up around construction, for some reason I sort of missed the memo about equipment. And the best example I have of this is from a few years ago. This is me starting into my storage facility project. There was probably half an acre of this ratty, overgrown, Palo Verde trees, and rather than ripping them out with a machine, I got out a chainsaw and cut them all down and stuffed them by hand into a wood chipper. Luckily, my friend Luis had a bobcat, so he kind of pushed them over into a pile for us. But I was really proud of myself for being such a hard worker and clearing this all out. And then the dirt work guy came who was doing the actual grading, and he saw what we had done, and he looked at me and was like, what is wrong with you? Rent a piece of equipment next time, you dummy. So it was a really pivotal moment for me, although it hadn't clicked in all the way. Later in that job, I needed a trench, so I got a trencher like I had done before. It was the wrong tool, and it got stuck big time. All right, we're making pretty good progress until, well, we've 300 feet, or no, more than that. Maybe, maybe almost 400 feet, I don't know. Got stuck a few times, but always got it out. It got stuck this time, and we've been working on it for a few hours nothing. So a few weeks later I had some more trenching to do and I got a bigger trencher and that worked and got the job done. But by the time the whole job was over I had seen several little excavators, backhoes, graders, that scraper, um, a, a huge front end loader, tractors and skip loaders. I just felt like a light bulb had finally gone off in my head and I understood something that most construction guys kind of learn on day one. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself to rent or even buy a small excavator and probably a little tractor or a bobcat or something at the very beginning of that job. Even if I had to finance it, I would have saved so much time and money and hassle. Soon after this job started, my son Rusty was born. Here he is, just a week and a half old on this very job site. And this kid came out of the womb, big time tuned in to tractors and machinery. He's almost six now, and it has been really fun paying close attention to equipment with him. We love spotting new equipment and even worn out old equipment. And as you can imagine, he takes every opportunity he can get to sit on the excavator with his grandpa. So now on to the present day. This contractor has these nice machines from Caterpillar. And from what I have gathered over the last few years, now that I'm paying attention, and correct me if I'm wrong, but CAT is the top of the line, name brand, high-end equipment manufacturer. It's more expensive than the other brands for machines of a similar class, but it has the best service available and the best access to parts and the most status and name recognition. Now, I don't think that means that's what everyone should have. Personally, I'm more excited and paying attention to what the best value is when I'm making big purchases, but it's still interesting. And it's such a massive company, 170 billion market cap. I think John Deere is the next biggest and they're way down there. And I know John Deere makes farming equipment and Cat doesn't do as much farming, but still, it is the original construction machinery company. They introduced the first tracked tractor back in the day. And ever since then, they've been improving and leveling it up one notch at a time every single year. I recently watched this really great video about their dozers and it really showcased how these improvements have stacked up over the years until what we have now is equipment that is unbelievably effective.
These two machines that we're watching are just a tiny snapshot of all the products they offer. And I have no idea if they're better machines than, than what the competition offers. I think the best advice I heard on this topic was from our fellow YouTuber, Stanley the Dirt Monkey. Who makes the best brand? Does Bobcat make the best brand? Caterpillar? Case? Well, the answer to that one is really simple. They all do. They all invest millions and millions of dollars into perfecting their piece of equipment. So they're all going to have a pretty good piece of equipment and then occasionally they're going to have a pretty bad piece of equipment. How do you guys choose which one is right for you? And that answer is simple as well. It's not about the brand, it's about the dealer in your area. If you have a dealer in your area and they have a bad reputation but they sell a good piece of equipment, avoid them like the plague. They're not worth dealing with because even the best piece of equipment is going to break down and need maintenance and service and then you're stuck with that dealer. Now if you have a dealer that has an amazing reputation, that's the person you want to work with. We have a Kubota and a John Deere dealer here where I live. But I heard a rumor that Caterpillar is opening a big facility in the area, so we'll have to see. Maybe we got Cat coming to town. I didn't talk about these guys doing the work, but as you can see, they did a great job. Equipment like this, like any tool, is only as good as the craftsman using it. So thanks for watching, guys. Keep up the good work. We'll catch you next time. Our next video is going to be this concrete going down. They did all the prep here, and the concrete they're doing is a sand finish. And believe it or not, we have never shared a video showing a sand finish on concrete, so I'm looking forward to sharing that. Guys, I finished this tractor video a couple days ago, and I've been thinking about it nonstop ever since. Not because the, the, the videos or the footage was so unique, but I've just been thinking about this equipment. And YouTube must have been reading my mind because they suggested this video called Tractor Wars. It is a documentary put out by PBS, and you, you have to watch it if you like this stuff. It's a historical look at the tractor and farming tractor development starting with horse-drawn implements. So once somebody first started figuring out, the guy's name is McCormick, I believe, how to build a machine that the horses could pull that would cut the, the hay and the wheat and everything down. It was a huge labor saver. And ever since then, it's just been one foot in front of the other, improving, getting better, getting better. Granted, lots of times they would develop something that was terrible and the company would go out of business and investors would lose. So it wasn't all, always a step forward. Trial and error though, that these engineers have just been going to town. At some point, they don't cover it in this documentary, but the guys who formed Caterpillar, you know, decided maybe some tracks would be a good way for a tractor to go. And you know, it led off into the whole construction um, equipment, like what we talked about in the video. But the other uh, documentary you ought to watch that's also on YouTube is about the brothers who developed the first Bobcat. Now it wasn't called a Bobcat then, but they saw a hole in the marketplace of tractors for something really small and agile and nimble. And so they developed the first uh, Bobcat. At the time, the first one had three wheels. It was a big caster wheel in the back. So it's just so cool. And then same thing, it just got improved. And then other people saw it and they're like, oh, that's a good idea. I bet we could do it better if we this or that. So all these different companies, meaning all these different engineers start working on problems, feedback from the people using them saying, oh, we'd really like it if it had this or that. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. I think that this documentary was based on a book that I'm probably gonna have to read now, but I really enjoyed it. If you made it to this part of the video, you probably would as well. And the best part for me is that it, it has all the footage of all these tractors and I don't know where they found all this stuff, but it's just, a, they do a phenomenal job. And as somebody who's now like spent a lot of time trying to put videos together, and I consider myself a beginner still. I was never trained or I, nobody ever like explained how these things should go. But when I was watching this one, the whole time I was thinking, well, this is how it's done. Thanks for watching guys. Keep up the good work. Catch you next time.